free to dream. But in dreaming, you have to work for it and persevere. You cannot just dream and wait and hope for something to come in. In every corner of the world, in every household, you want to see an Everblana product, um, especially for our Filipino cus customers and consumers. Hi guys, I'm Ice Martinez. Welcome to Talk Talk, where we get to talk to movers, shakers, and trailblazers of different fields in the Philippines. And today, we are joined by a father and daughter duo, Deo C and Denise C, business owners of one of the largest cosmetic brands here in the Philippines, Ever Bilena. <music> Good day to you guys. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for visiting. Thanks for visiting us. Yes, yeah, so we are here in their office at Ever Belena. So tell me guys, how did Ever Belena get started? Well, it started way back 1983. Uh, I was 25. And uh, it's all uh, inspiration from my uncle on the mother's side. He was a pioneer here in the country. He came in 1938. He started his own... Uh, uh, cosmetic factory and he started with uh, pomade uh, that was before the war and uh, during the war uh, he was able to continue his business despite the war well because he's uh, he had a good uh, PR uh, imagine and for myself uh, the company he started uh, unfortunately went uh, was shut down 1980 my and the grandfather's company. My, that's what I got my grandfather's company. Because he, he passed away early at 1969. He was only 58 and I was only 11. And I saw how big the company was and how it closed down because uh, he passed away a very untimely death. And uh, during that time, my uncle was only 19, 20 years old out of high school. So there was no, uh, how do you call it, no next gen. Imagine a high school graduate taking over a big business. Of course, it took them another 10 years. And I saw how a big company rise and how it fall. So that's why when I started it in 1983, already in my mind is the next gen already. So that's how I'm guiding Denise here. Uh, she started 2014. And up to today, it's 2022, it's eight years running. So it's, it's a practically uh, number one inspired by my uncle when I started this business. So it started 1983, Everbelena. Can you tell me about your mission and vision for the company? Well, our mission and vision now is uh, to help uh, Everbelena available in all households. It should be a, a mass market price. Uh, because 80% of people is uh, masa, so and uh, I always tell them is uh, that's where our our uh, key market should be, and uh, also the 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 guidance I gave her, uh, I'm looking at the price should be at maximum 50% of your minimum wage daily. Ever Belena has been in the industry for 39 years now. Can we ask if there is a secret in keeping the business successful? Actually going 40 in a couple of months oh. and uh, unfortunately I, my age is growing but it's good my heart's still young at heart. I feel I'm in the mid 40s and uh, I was able to convince Denise to come back from her schooling in Berkeley in 2014. Okay. Good he, she followed my uh, persistence uh, convincing of coming wow. back because I said to myself and to my friends, if she start working there, I cannot bring her back. Mm -hmm. So it's good she she got that uh, good wisdom to come home. So well, I think to answer your question about how the company is able to survive 39 years, I think it's a lot to do with having a good corporate structure. So um, 20 years into the company, my dad actually started professionalizing, and I think um, for a company, it's very important that you departmentalize a lot of processes so that things will run smoothly even without my dad being so hands-on as much. 
Um, but aside from corporate structure, I think innovation is really key. So since 2014, since coming here, we really did revamp a lot of our efforts from marketing to product development, um, and also the way we uh, manage people. So we make sure everyone is treated like family, but at the same time also respect um, our corporate values of really, um, you know, enabling them to excel in their own ways and then trusting our people to do the job well. So I feel like a lot of these um, ingredients and factors come into play when it comes to making a company last this long. And of course, with the vision and guidance of my dad to make sure that whatever, um, whatever new innovations that we, encounter, that we introduce and new challenges that we encounter, we always stay true to the values of the company, which is um, a direction that my dad also founded. You mentioned innovations. What were the main innovations for the new line of products for Ever Belena? My dad didn't mention, but in 1983 when we started, um, it was just Ever Belena. He started with nail polish. Um, and that time, he was already thriving with the nail polish business. They were doing like triple digit growth every year, year on year. But then he saw that there's a huge market for products outside nail polish. And so he, that's where he um, incorporated makeup. So that's where we started introducing brow products, liner products, lipsticks, until we became a full color cosmetics line. So that's Ever Belena. And then a few years fo that followed after that, he saw that about 10 years into the business, um, the, the, main, the initial target market of Ever Belena were growing up. And then he felt like there's a new generation of teenagers, young people who wanted to explore makeup but did not have um, the capacity to yet. He introduced um, Caroline Cosmetics, which is a younger brand um, okay. than Ever Belena. Caroline's, I think, 18 this year, if I'm not mistaken. It started 2005, 17, 17. Yeah. Um, so from there, um, after Caroline, he saw that there's like a, a gap in the grooming business and that's where Blackwater came along. And so I think when you see how Ever Blanc Cosmetics Inc. grew in terms of our brand portfolio, it's a lot of because of seeing opportunities that we have not yet tapped. And so a lot of our innovations actually happened during the pandemic when demand for color cosmetics from the mass market significantly declined because of masking mandates, because of the COVID protocols. And so because of that, we were forced to really explore and, you know, be creative with our product development and innovations. Discovered by accident. I, yeah, I think you could never anticipate. I think the pandemic really hit everyone. You know, we, nobody understood how to navigate it. And we really had a hard time. The first time the pandemic hit, I was so depressed because, you know, I'm coming from like working every single day and suddenly our office was shut down because we were considered non-essentials, right? And then during the lockdown in April 2020 and March 2020, um, we, were we were forced to shut down. So every company dreams of expansion. What are the types of expansion ever Belena is looking for or constantly looking for? You know, my dad's mission is basically, the ba? He wants, uh, in Tagalog, it's uh, sa bawat tahanan may ever Belena. So sa bawat sulok ng mundo, sa bawat tahanan may ever Belena. So basically, it's saying in every corner of the world, in every household, you want to see an ever Belena product. Um, especially for our... Filipino cus customers and consumers, right? So coming from there, um, in the Philippines, I think we're one of the most, probably the most distributed brand already in terms of makeup. We're in 6,000 outlets. Um, during the pandemic alone, we actually expanded 1,400, and then we're aiming for 1,500 doors by next year. Um, and then simultaneously, even with um, Watson's and SM supermarkets, Robinson stores, and all retail stores, you'll be able to see Ever Belana. And so that's one of the expansion efforts that we're doing continuously that we hope to maintain and, and keep productive. Um, but aside from that, we're also trying to expand the market in terms of, you know, also educating our customers. So I'm not sure if you've seen, but recently some of our innovations for Everblana are not limited to um, mass market innovations. We also have innovations that cater to the middle class and up. How does DOC and Denise go about their own days? What are your daily routines? from home to work on weekends? Um, well, before July, because I, I moved to Kaloocan. I, we live in Antipolo, but I moved to Kaloocan in July because my son started school. So, so it's closer to, to the, it's closer to the school living here. Um, but right now, my usual routine is, you know, you, I wake up seven, I bring down my son to the driver to bring him to school. Then our house is just next, is so nearby. So I just come here. Um, on a regular day, uh, when there's no store openings, no ingress, um, I come in, do my emails, 
we have meetings here and then really check on everyone. But there are um, days on the week when I allocate for field work. So I also okay. do field work. I check the stores personally. Um, and when there are openings, I make sure I'm present to check how the first day sales are like. How about on your pastime? Pastime. How do you spend your day relaxing like your dad? Basketball. Uh, pastime. Well, on weekends, I like my massages and um, I bring my son to uh, to play dates. So that's basically, um, I just drink my coffee in the morning and work. And You're then, just workaholic. workaholic. That makes you happy. How about you, sir? What's the other side of you? Like, what's the more laid back? Well, right now, I'm looking forward to spend more time with the family. Like last week, we spent a couple of days in uh, one of uh, urban, urban vacation. So instead of traveling out, we just stay in, in a hotel and to be together. What advice can you give to people wanting to succeed in their chosen careers or business? Would you like to go first? Well, for me, I think we are free to dream. But in dreaming, you have to work for it and persevere. You cannot just dream and wait and hope for something to come in. As I, said, I always say there's no such thing as chamba. The chamba is the result of your hard work. Once you have the hard work, perseverance, that's the success will come in and it's not a chamba. Maybe it's timing. What I learned from my dad is always that money is hard earned, but it's also easier to earn than a, than a good reputation and good credibility. So I think, um, you know, no matter what business venture you push, you decide to pursue, you have to make sure your credibility is intact. That's one. And then second is also making sure you're consistent with whatever effort you're pursuing. Because a lot of people, when they um, enter the workplace or, or when they enter a new business venture they come in excited and then once the excitement goes away the consistency also goes away and that's when a business fails so consistency credibility and also um, something I learned from my dad um, very importantly during the pandemic is finding your purpose because when my dad started Everblana he started it to make a living for himself right and now we're providing livelihood to over 2,000 families and so coming from that, I recognize the responsibility of making sure the business succeeds because the success of these livelihoods also rely on the success of Everbalana. And I think for anyone who are aiming to pursue a business, they have to recognize their purpose as well because that's what will keep them consistent and determined to um, build their business to fusion. So. All right, thank you so much for your time, Sir Deo and Denise.